Let's find out if the Logitech G93 is worthwhile in 2023. This unit was sent by Logitech when it was launched three years ago, and since then it has dropped the price to around £299 or roughly $350. But is it enough? I've been using this wheel on and off since 2020, going through many comparisons and scenarios, so look at this from a long-term review perspective. This wheel keeps much of its engineering back from the G25 days. It's a geared wheelbase, 28 centimeter wheel rim with real leather. It's really sturdy. It has many buttons, including a rotary dial. Two shifter paddles. It has the compatibility with the PC and PlayStation or Xbox, depending what version you were going to buy. However, it is close to 100 pounds more expensive than the Logitech G29 and just roughly 50 to 70 from the T300. In terms of torque, this gear-driven wheelbase should deliver roughly around 2.5 Nm of torque, adding a new feature called TrueForce. The pedals are the same design as well. We have three pedals, plastic base, metal pedal faces. Both pieces can be art mounted using the mounting screws or they can be used mounted on a desk or on the floor. The wheelbase has an integrated desk mount and the pedals can be used in carpets by deploying spikes or on very smooth surfaces with the rubber base. For the wheel, you should need some retightening every once in a while, but generally they are fine for casual sessions, though I would recommend a wheel stand if you are going to use it for longer sessions. Flipping the wheelbase around, you'll see the common Logitech G things. The cables are routed directly inside following these routing channels, but be careful to route them correctly if you don't, there is a possibility of squishing the cables or also if you don't leave some slack internally, you might tug into them. There's also a shifter that can be purchased separately. It will be compatible with the G93 and the G29. And you can also connect the Logitech load cell pedals if you use this handy dandy thing. I'll be reviewing this soon and also comparing the G93 with the T300, so subscribe to keep up to date. In terms of sound that this generates as the G923 is a gear-driven wheel, it's on the noisier side. It's not as much as the G29, but still worth mentioning. The ergonomics of this wheel are really, really good. While small, it is comfortable. All the buttons are easily reachable. The clickiness of the buttons are also okay. So is the shifter. There's really nothing wrong about them, but then again, nothing out of the ordinary. I'll talk about upgrades later on. The pedals are exactly the same thing as any other Logitech G pedal set since the Jurassic. Will be plastic construction with an inside being a metal cradle. You'll see springs all around. It works and has been working forever. Only really the brake spring has changed for the G923. Now it's a little more linear. These pedals have very reasonable rates all around for floor carpet and wheel stand use. It has a happy medium. While they are not big, the pedals are reasonably well distance enough for a set of this type and they will allow for heel toe action if you like that. You can have a shifter if you buy it separately. It comes at around 30 pounds to around $50 and it is also compatible with the G29. It's a six gear plus reverse type. The shifter can be hard mounted, but to be fair, most will clamp it to the desk. While nicely constructed, the gates are a bit on the vague side and the gear engagement is rather soft, but at the price, you can't really expect much more. Going towards the software, you have the regular Logitech thing. It uses the G Hub, love it or hate it. It does its job, nothing more, nothing less. There aren't many options to configure the wheel with, mainly true force, rotation, and force effects. That means some of the fine tuning will need to be made on the game side of things. About the driving, it is a Logitech G wheel. So if you have experienced one, you basically have driven them all, but there are a few things here and there that have some differences. First of all, the wheel doesn't have a lot of torque. It has just enough torque to be useful to bring the steering forces in, even some counter steering forces, but don't expect drifting to be fair. It is the smoothest Logitech G wheel by some extent. It is not a silent wheel. There will be some noise, but it will be manageable. This wheel is competent all way around. In a set, of course, it has just enough detail to keep everything in check. You'll get the needed sensations to drive, such as curbs, suspension moving, force, all of that. Even after many years, the Logitech system does everything at a very decent level. It's really decent with Forza Horizon 5, providing a good level of immersion, making this wheel perfect for entry-level sim racing or especially casual games. 
It is not bad in Assetto Corsa Competizione as well. In the past, I have put side to side the G923 against the DD1, which was on my main rig, and I was able to get the same times, provided that, of course, the pedals were the same between them. If you are into drifting, the lack of torque will require some fitting into the wheel as the G923 isn't particularly fast nor powerful. This shows that the G923 has basically all the necessary tools for an accurate driving. TrueForce is a selling point of this wheel, it gives a haptic feedback into your steering wheel to further increase sensations. The downside is that it does require a title that supports it and it needs to be very well calibrated in the wheel and in the game. To be honest, it really only works decently with Gran Turismo Sport in 7, where the sensations are improved. In Assetto Corsa Competizione, it makes the wheel feel kind of hollow. Increasing the values will have the same type of effects that you would have on old cell phones vibration motors. The pedals do their work. I think for the price of the bundle, it is very hard to find major flaws. They are precise enough, the spring rates are fantastic, and the brake spring is super nice. They are also very easy to use on a floor and carpet with the spikes. As a package with the shifter, it is really quite compelling, everything works together rather well. The shifter isn't really that expensive and you can also use it with the G29. The shifting throw could be a little bit better, the gates could be a little more clear, but the design has been unchanged for years because it does what it does very well. My last point is about upgrades. This ecosystem has plenty to choose from, there are two recommendations I can give. First of all, get something for the shifters, 3D wrap, Sim Racing Addict, do great magnetic pedal shifter for this. Then one thing I recommend but is expensive, it will be the AXC True Brake mod. It is the closest thing to a load cell I've ever tried for this pedal set. It really improves the brake feel many, many times over. The link for that review is on the description below. I think you'll find it very interesting. The price of the G923 ends up being its biggest downside. At £290 or around $350, it offers largely the same experience, albeit a little bit smoother and more refined and quieter than the older G29, minus the True Force. To be fair, only really Gran Turismo 7 has a decent implementation of True Force with this wheel, so in between both, unless you play GT7 or you find a deal, the G29 may be a better choice. Saying all of that, I will never get rid of the G923 unless Logitech brings a substitute. It is a good wheel to serve as a sanity check, a palate cleanser to see if I'm not getting too snobbish with this hobby. The wheel is okay, the pedals are okay, and when paired with even with a decent pedal set or having the brake upgraded to the true brake, it could be a set to last you for years to come. I'll be comparing the G923 with the T300 RS soon. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you very much to all the members.